Have you ever been stabbed in the back by very close people or a very close person? Does it not just feel so terrible and you feel like you want to get back on that person? Today I want to talk about revenge. High impact people do not revenge. My name is David Oginde and I want to welcome you to this continuing series on becoming a high impact person. When you look at the life of Joseph, one of the very key things that stands out about him is how he handled his brothers who had sold him into slavery when they finally met. He uh, played around with them and finally revealed himself to them. And when they discovered that this was the brother that they had actually sold out into slavery, they were totally afraid because they wondered what is he going to do to us? And by that time, he was a very key official in Egypt where they had gone to look for food. And so they knew they were in trouble, they, he could do anything to them, and in fact, they were willing and ready to be punished for that which they had done. But it's amazing how Joseph acted so very opposite to what his brothers expected of him. And this is something that we can learn from Joseph. I want to pick out three things that make Joseph's reaction and response to his brothers so very unique and therefore makes him a very high impact person. He stands out among the people as a person who knows how to handle people who have mistreated him. The first thing we find is that high impact people act calmly towards mistreatment. Joseph, when he was being mistreated by his brothers, they hated him right back home. They mistreated him, they called him names, but you find Joseph remained calm in all those situations. When they were throwing him into the pit, when they were selling him into slavery, you don't find him reacting, fighting, trying to do anything. He takes everything calmly. That is not an easy thing for many of us. We will uh, throw tantrums, we will uh, call people names, we will try to do whatever we can do to show them our displeasure with what they are doing. But sometimes that only escalates, causes things to escalate and there could be a big fight, we could lose your life. It is very possible these people could have killed Joseph if he had reacted because there were 11 against one. Surely there was no way he was going to fight these people. But because he remained calm, his life was preserved. Sometimes it is uh, wise to just remain calm as people call you names, as people do things to you. It is not being a doormat, as other people would say, you know, you are becoming a doormat. I think it is Kenny Rogers who said, you must know when to fight and you know, must know when to run. Sometimes running is not a cowardice, it is actually wisdom. And this is what we find Joseph doing. He remains calm in the situation and his life is preserved so that he could fight another day. Sometimes when we fight, we lose the battle, we lose everything, and in the process, you can never become the person you intended to be or you planned to be. You may be fighting with your, mem uh, with your colleagues in the organization. You may be fighting with classmates in the class. You may be fighting with the leaders in your organization. And these are people who could actually undermine you and bring you down totally and kill the vision and dream that you had. But if you remain calm in that situation like Joseph was, you find that you could go very far even in that situation. The second thing that we find about Joseph is that when he now is taken into Egypt, God has raised him into a very high place and finally his brothers come to look for food and he reveals himself to them. They are definitely scared. But in, uh, in Joseph's response, we find something else that is a characteristic of high impact people. That high impact people do not harbor bitterness. 
These people come to him and they are so apologetic. They do not know what to do. <clears throat> but listen to what the Bible says. In Genesis chapter 45 verse 5, the Bible says, And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here, because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. Very interesting. Joseph is the one who calms these people down and says, Don't be distressed about what you have done. Instead of saying, You see, you thought you had sold me, now see where I am. No, he calms them down. Don't be distressed. High impact people do not harbor bitterness because they know that bitterness only eats oneself. When you hold bitterness in your heart, imagine the number of years that Joseph had been in Egypt. If all this time he was harboring bitterness, he could not have gone far. It would have brought him down, it would have eaten him up, especially in these times when he was in prison, when he was being mistreated in, in Egypt, he could have wondered, why did my brothers bring me to this place? But Joseph did not have a bitterness. The Bible tells us that instead of bitterness, we forgive. When we forgive, we release the person who has hurt us, the person who has done wrong to us, and we can then move on with our lives. Many people think that forgiveness is for the person who has wronged you. Actually, forgiveness is for you who has been wronged. It is for you to find peace of mind, to have settlement in your spirit. Because the person you have wronged and whom you are forgiven may not even care about your forgiveness. They may not even care what you feel. And so if you feel that unless a person apologizes, I cannot forgive them, then you may never forgive many people. Because few people apologize or even recognize that they have hurt you, they have done you wrong. But when you forgive them, then you release them and you can continue on with your life. If you look at Jesus on the cross, he was being crucified and after they have crucified him, it's as if nothing has happened. Now they are sharing his clothes right at the foot of the cross. And it's as if nothing has happened. Jesus looks at them and says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. And with that, he releases himself from them. Forgiveness is an amazing therapy for hurt and pain that we hold in our spirits. And so if you are going to be a high impact person, you cannot move on with bitterness in your spirit. You must release the people who have hurt you. You must release the people who have done you wrong. You must continue, uh, uh, forgive them and continue with your life. Otherwise, you're going to be paralyzed and you're going to stay where you are, if not worse than where you have been. And that is what your enemies want. They want to bring you down. So you'll be playing right into their hands if you harbor bitterness, which then brings you down. But thirdly, what we see from Joseph is high-impact people have a godly perspective to wrong. High-impact people have a godly perspective to wrong. It is a spirit that appreciates that everything that happens in my life, whether good or bad, God has a hand in it, and he knows what he's doing with my life. When a person has got to the place where they have placed their lives in the hands of God, then you know that there is nothing that can happen in your life without God's involvement. There is no enemy that can come against you without God himself allowing it. Because God is an almighty God, he surrounds you with his angels, and so when he allows certain things to happen in your life, there must be a purpose for that. And that is what Joseph says. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, this is what he says. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So Joseph tells these brothers of his that when you sold me, you thought you were doing me in. But you know what? You are playing right into God's hands because God intended this to save many lives. And I have been used of God 
to save those lives. When we bring God into the picture of our pain, of our heart, of the things that happen around us, let me tell you, you begin to look at things from a totally different perspective. And the pain that you feel then is lessened because you know that you are in the hands of God. You may not at that particular time really understand what could be going on, but you know that ultimately God makes all things to work together for good for those people who are called according to his purpose. And so when I am in God's hands, then I will appreciate that indeed I do not understand but God must be up to something. Why did God call me, allow this person to call me names? I've just been reading the story of David. And David is being uh, chased, actually pursued by his own son Absalom, who wants to kill him. And he, he has run away from the palace. He's running into hiding. And he, as he's passing by, a Benjamite man called Shimei, sees him and begins to hurl curses at him because this man believes that it is him who caused Saul, who was a Benjamite, to be removed from kingship. And so he curses David and throws stones at him. And David's men say, look, let us chop off the head of this dead dog. And David has an amazing answer to his men. He says, leave that man alone. Who knows that but that God is the one who sent him to send to have these curses at me. If it is God who has sent him, then what can we do just by killing him? But if it is not, then his curses will not hold because God is on our side. So in, he puts God into the perspective of this situation and it changes the whole situation and how he responds to it. When we bring God into the perspective of what we are going through, then we can go through any hurt, any pain, anything that any person brings upon us. It may be very painful what your brothers do to you. It may be very painful what your boss has done to you. It may be very painful what your spouse has done to you. But instead of harboring bitterness and seeking revenge, look to God and say, Lord, why are you allowing this to happen? Why have you allowed so and so to, to do this to me? What are you up to? And you surrender your life to him and you'll be amazed at how God turns things around and eventually you can look back and say, you know what? You meant this for evil, but God meant it for good. I may be talking to someone who is going through pain, through hurt. Somebody has done you in somebody has called your name, somebody has undermined you at your place of work, somebody has done things that are just, you're, you're just so pained in your heart, killed a, a friend or a relative, and you're so pained. This message is for you. Turn this matter over to God. Release that person from your life and just look to God and let him turn this bitterness into something sweet. Because that is what God wants to do. High impact people do not revenge. I want to pray for you if you are in that situation. Or if you just want to turn your life over to Jesus. Why don't we pray together? <clears throat> Everlasting Father, there may be somebody who is watching this video, who is listening to us. And Lord, they are in that place where they are really pained and bitter about what somebody has done for them. But I want to pray that you release this person. Give them the courage, give them the, what it takes to release the person who has hurt them, to forgive them and to turn their lives over to you and look up to you who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Your word tells us that you make all things to work together for good for those who are called according to your purpose. I pray that you turn around this which was meant for evil so that it can become something that catapults this person into higher levels of living, that they become very high impact people. 
We want to thank you if there's any who is listening has never committed their lives to Jesus Christ. May this be their opportunity to do so, so that they may live for you and serve you all the days of their lives. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and thank you for listening. I pray that this takes you to another level and eases the pain and burden that you have. If you have any question that you'd like to ask, if you want us to pray with you or answer some of your questions, just get in touch with us and we will be happy to do so. The contacts are right there on the screen and somebody is waiting to help you in any way we can. God bless you. Have a great time.